Hey everybody, Corey here. We all know how to make multiple choice questions in a Moodle quiz. But an instructor asked me, what if I wanted to do a multiple choice question that has multiple right answers? Ah, we can do that in three different ways. That's what we'll cover in this video. So, let's go right to our quiz. I've got a sample quiz set up here. No questions have been added yet. And we're going to talk about three ways that we can use multiple answer multiple choice questions. We'll do one where students can select more than one answer and get partial credit for each right answer. We'll do another version where students still only select one answer but get credit as long as that's one of several right answers available. And we'll do what's called an all or nothing question where there are more than one right answer and students have to mark every one of those answers and none of the wrong answers to get full credit. It's full credit or no credit. Three kinds of questions. Let's take a look. So, you get a quiz going in Moodle, you create that, and then you go to Edit Quiz. All right, as you can see here, I have no questions created yet. So we're going to go right to the Add button. That's over here on the right, underneath Shuffle, and we want to add a new question. And now we get our usual dialog here, and we'll scroll down. Let's get a multiple choice question. To create a multiple choice question with multiple answers, we do the same setup as always. Let's do, uh, this is my space, space quiz. So we'll do moons of Jupiter. And let's say, which of the following orbit Jupiter? All right, now, get the question name, get the question there in the box. We get toward the bottom of that portion and it says one or multiple answers. This option is key. By default, it's one answer only. The answer is gonna be D and the rest will be wrong or however you set it up. We're going to change that to multiple answers allowed. That's the key to doing a multiple answer, multiple choice question. Multiple answers allowed. And sure, we'll shuffle the choices. Leave that on. It's a good idea. And now we start entering our answers. Usually what we do if we're entering a, let's see, multiple choice question, we put a correct answer and then we assign it 100% credit. And then the other options we do, say Titan, not a moon of Jupiter, that one's not a correct answer, and so we leave that none for the grade, no credit. So a normal multiple choice question, that's what you do. Give the correct answer, set the grade to 100% credit, and then the incorrect answers, set it to none. But now suppose I want students to see multiple correct answers. Suppose I add Callisto in here. That's also a right answer. One way to do this now is to give partial credit for each of these answers with the expectation then that students have to mark all the correct answers to get full credit. So I'm going to actually put three correct answers in here. So that means I want to set each one to be worth one third credit, 33.3%. So Io is worth 33 and a third percent, Callisto is worth 33 and a third percent, and Ganymede. And that one will be 33 and a third percent. Now, I'll throw in a couple of other incorrect answers. Triton, that's no credit there. And if I want a sixth one, I want three that are correct and three that are incorrect, for instance, on this. Notice Moodle gives me five choices by default, so I've got to hit blanks for three more choices. You can't just add one more, you got to add three more spots. Click on that, and there's my choice one, two, three, Callisto still there, Ganymede, Triton, the wrong one, and I want to throw in Miranda, not a moon of Jupiter. Now, I've got six choices here, but consider the way this is set up. If a student says, oh, I've got to mark all the ones that are moons of Jupiter. If the moons of Jupiter are each one-third credit, and the incorrect answers don't give any points, a student could still go through and mark all six. And they'd get the third credit for each of the right answers, nothing would happen with the wrong answers, and they'd get a full point for the question. So if you're going to do a multiple answer, multiple choice question, now instead of leaving the wrong answers as no credit, you've actually got to make them negative credit. So that someone can't just go through and guess all of them and get points or not have a penalty. So notice when I go to the grade on Titan, one of the wrong answers, click grade, can go down to zero, but then I can get negative numbers. So now to penalize guessing on that so people just don't go and check everything, I'm going to make that take a negative one-third point off. And likewise with Triton, 
There we go. And likewise with Miranda. There we go. Negative third point for that. Now, Moodle will keep track. It's not going to take extra points off just because someone guessed all wrong. You can't get negative points for a question. But it will take points back from that incorrect guessing down to zero credit for the question. So we'll go to the bottom and we'll say, you bet, save changes. And I'm going to hit save changes and continue editing because when you do this, when you create a quiz question, after you save it once, down at the bottom, Moodle gives you a preview button, so we can look at what this question will look like for the students. And there's my preview. Which of the following orbit Jupiter? Well, let's see. Uh, Callisto, there's Ganymede, there's Io. I can check my three, and notice now, when I check an answer, it doesn't uncheck the others. Instead of radio buttons, where you can only hit one at a time, using that multiple answer option allows me to have check boxes, where I can check as many as I think are correct. And notice even Moodle pops up instructions saying select one or more, indicating that it's that kind of question. So put those three on there. Let's see if I get a score. Sure. And then when students do that question, they get the score. Your answer is correct. Now let's try again. Let me see what happens if I just guess randomly. If I say, okay, well, he said it's more than one. I'm going to click all of them and see what happens. Let's watch what happens when we grade that now. Open that window up a bit. Ah, and it says, nope, no points there. The answer is incorrect. It shows me which ones are uh, moons and which ones aren't, but I'm not going to get credit for that answer. And if I say guess only one of them or two of them, let's see what Moodle says for that. It says partially correct. I'll get a couple of points off of that. Cool. So, little feature you can use to check the question to make sure it's behaving the way you want, that preview button. Let's save the changes now. Now, as you can see, the multiple answer, multiple choice question with the partial credit gets kind of complicated with those numbers. You can do it, but there's another way we can do mul a multiple answer question. Let's create a new question now. And let's say we want to have a multiple choice question with multiple correct answers. And this time we'll do planets with no moons. Identify one of the planets that has no natural satellite. All right. Now, I'm going to put multiple correct answers here, but I'm going to leave this question set to one answer only. Ah just like a regular question. But I can still say, okay, Mercury would be a correct answer to that, so they can get full credit for that answer. Or Venus, they can get full credit for that answer. Or, well, let's just leave it at those two. Those are the two that don't have satellites. Then I could put others on here. Earth, nope, got a satellite. Mars, nope, it's got two satellites. And the ever-controversial Pluto does have a satellite. Now notice those, I'll just leave the grade on the incorrect answers at none. The two correct answers each are worth 100%, but because I left it on one answer only, that means I can give full credit for whichever correct answer the student picks. So if you just want to see them pick one of the answers, you can do the problem this way. If they get Merc guess Mercury, they'll get 100%. If they guess Venus, they'll guess 100%, and they'll only be able to pick one of the answers out of the five given. We'll go down here and save the changes. There we go, got it to stick. And we scroll down, yep, still got Mercury and Venus at 100. And we know that Earth and Mars and Pluto are all set to no credit, and let's hit the preview button. All right, and now notice, instead of check boxes like we got for the first one, now we're back to radio buttons. And when I select one answer, that gets rid of previous selections. I can only pick one of these answers. And we'll pick Venus, submit and finish, and it says, you bet. 
and we can find out, yep, labeled there are two possible correct answers. Very good. So you see the difference there between a question that has multiple answers and lets you pick more than one, and a question like this that sticks with the radio buttons. It's got multiple correct answers, but the students will only get to pick one or the other, or one of the wrong answers. So that maybe gets rid of that guessing question of, oh, I'll just mark a bunch and see what happens, and having to remember what to do with negative points. The one answer only, you can still put multiple correct answers and just give full credit for either of the right answers. There is a third kind of question we can do that has multiple correct answers, but this is a higher stakes question. We're going to go to add new question, and instead of multiple choice, we're going to use this one at the top the all or nothing multiple choice question. As the name implies, all or nothing means you've got to mark all of the correct answers available and you've got to get none of the incorrect answers, mark none of those, or you get no credit. So it's all or nothing. So let's do moons of Saturn to demonstrate. Identify all, and I'll emphasize, if I'm making an all or nothing question for the students, I'd better let them know it's an all or nothing question. So they can go, oh, I better find every one of them. All right, so this is an all or nothing, all of the following that orbit Saturn. And notice there's no choice here now. It assumes we're going to mark all the right answers. And now we get a little simpler interface. Since it's all or nothing, we'll put Rhea here. And we just say, yep, that's one of Saturn's moons. We don't have to do any grading with, you know, full credit, half credit, negative credit, anything like that. Moodle's just going to say, oh, this is all or nothing? Okay, tell me which ones are correct. And I want to put Mimas, and then we want to put Enceladus. So I've got three that students have to mark. If they leave any one of those out, this will be wrong. In addition, if they mark Europa, and I leave that blank, it's not correct. Or if they mark Titania not correct, they will get zero credit on this question. So notice the advantage of the all or nothing question is it's a little simpler to set up. Instead of picking a point total, you just check correct, correct, for whichever ones are the correct answers. And then Moodle just goes all or nothing. It's either a full point or nothing if you get one wrong. Go to the preview button. There's the question. Now notice we're back to check boxes because we can do more than one but we've got to mark the ones that belong to Saturn. There we go. Check boxes. It lets you mark more than one. If I mark just one incorrect answer, oh, it's going to catch me and say your answer is incorrect. You've got to do just the three that are right there. Nope, it shuffled again for me. Mark those three. All right, says it's correct. Now notice, if I do just correct ones, if I mark Mimas, and if I mark Enceladus, both of those are correct answers, but I'm leaving Rhea off. I hit Submit and Finish. Oh, it says, yeah, those are right, but your answer is incorrect. Correct answers, and it says, oh, that's the one I left out. So that's an all or nothing question. You can't just get one or two right. Uh, if there are three correct answers, you've got to mark all three and not mark any of the wrong ones. So a little simpler setup on the all or nothing question. But there you go. Three kinds of questions where you have multiple answers in a multiple choice format.